Hello everyone, this is AV Creative. Today we are going to have so much fun making a fantastical unicorn painting. We are using the satisfying and easy swipe technique to make this a project anyone can try. Let's get right into it. It's time for a new project today. So for this we are going to be using black canvas. This one is 28 by 35 to Natasha's canvas. Now because we are going to be painting a dark background, I do like those black canvases. For the background, I'm actually going to use two colors today, fast black and ultramarine blue. So let's just spread the paint. Now what's in it? One part of paint to one part of my pouring medium and my pouring medium consists of 50% of water, 50% of PVA glue and I mix it really well and then I add I would say 30% of Floetrol. I don't really measure and if it's still too thick I just spray in some water. Show the consistency now. Runs off the stick really smoothly. The stream is uninterrupted, it's really important. I want it a bit lighter at the top. This color looks always much, 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 much darker once it's dry. I want to create the background something like a night sky. And then all the rest is going to be black. So the midsection is going to be a bit of a mix. I don't want the edge to be really sort of sharp. I want to blend it in. Now while I'm spreading it, I want to thank every single person who sends me some suggestions for new videos. Thank you so much. And there were a couple of people who actually mentioned the unicorn. Perfect, the colors can blend in as they wish. You know, I was thinking, we actually don't have to pour the background. You can always paint around your image, but I must say something, you know, for pouring. Uh, when you pour the background, it always looks better. You've got a really nice coverage and you've got this kind of shiny effect that a brush won't give you. Well, unless you varnish it really well, you know. This is the next day, very next day. It's completely dry now. It's very dark now, just a deep blue and black. Now, I did have a horse from my previous horse painting. However, this canvas is different size. I need a smaller horse. So I was trying to resize it and turn it into a, a unicorn. In the end, I started sketching various unicorns and I think I'll go with this one. I tried various legs, but none of the legs will be seen in full on my canvas, which is absolutely fine. So that's it. You can find a ready stencil online. You can copy some of them, but make sure you either buy it or find a royalty free one. So there's no problem later. If you know some horses and you took some pictures of a horse, you can draw it from your own photo. Okay, so I am going to transfer this onto frisket paper. Do you know what the easiest way to transfer an image is? My students love it. They call it magic. You just tape it down to whichever page you want to transfer it to. You make sure that the lead is touching the page, the lead of a pencil. And I did use 4B pencil, which helps. It's a softer, darker pencil. I'm taping it so it doesn't move. Some people just, just draw over the lines, but I am too impatient. So now you basically press the lines with something, well, blunt. Sometimes I just use my nail, but you may not like the noise. You know scratching with the nail so or just draw with a pencil i think i finished let's just peel it off and uh, it might be that some sections will need some touch-ups but that's fine i should have the whole silhouette yes see uh, this part is not finished because that's where his mane will go when i do the pouring i think i'm just going to do it it's an indication of gentle spiral you can also adapt you can make all the necessary adaptations once you cut it. I think that's that looks kind of good to me. The one thing you have to pay attention to once you cut the, the horse's face, the, the muzzle, make sure it's actually pretty accurate because you don't want your horse to look like a dog or some other creature, which is possible very easily. Because I'm going to use the stencil, what I need, I want the outside. So I'm cutting out my unicorn very carefully leaving all the outside because that's what I need. 
Okay, that will take me some time, so put some music on, have a cup of tea or coffee as I usually say. You can even use AB Creative Mug. To be honest, I actually enjoy those, well, some people may say those tedious bits, you know, when you have to cut something. Because I really can relax, you know, listen to something and really, really enjoy myself. So I don't rush anything. I finished cutting my unicorn. I think he looks quite pretty. Okay, so I'm ready to stick it down. I'm just wondering how high can I go? That's probably the highest I can do. So as you see, I'm just reiterating again the same. So we are keeping the outside. But I do keep these just in case I've got something else on my mind. You know, I've got lots of ideas. So I'm just keeping that. There's a link to Frisket paper if you're interested. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you it's going to go this way. And I did want it the other way. Frisket paper doesn't leave this nasty sticky residue. That's why I prefer it. When you stick it down, make sure it, it's really smooth. There are no air bubbles and it, it's really flat. It's very important. Uh, so basically I've got most of it done. Just this one little section somewhere here. I'm, I'm checking where it should go. So that's the hoof here. Okay, so I've got it. I need it here. One. And I think there was a really, really tiny bit, if I find it somewhere. And... That's it. Can you see that? Now you can see really well. Make sure they're really well stuck. Now, if you want to do the same project, this section is optional, but I like doing it. I am going to actually seal the edges, all the edges with white. And not only that, I'm also going to cover the holes with white. I don't have to do it, but I think because my canvas is black and I'm going to actually pour some light colors I don't want the black kind of peeping through, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Can I touch it with my finger? You don't have to use your fingers. You can use gloves. You can put gloves on. I just like feeling the edge, and I know that I kind of sealed it. Once this layer is getting dry, I'm going to have a look online, because I usually don't have time to watch, because I have another job. Uh, but I'm going to check if anybody else did a unicorn, I'm sure. I'm sure probably Crafty Jenny has painted the unicorn some time ago, but I wonder if anyone else has done it. It's really nice to, you know, if you use someone else's idea to credit the people. Well, I must say I'm just doing a unicorn because I wanted to do a unicorn, but I know that Crafty Jenny was the person who started the stencils, uh, especially the ladies' stencils. I've been using stencils for years and years, but not with pouring. I've been using stencils with my students, especially doing street art projects, uh, something like Banksy's work. And you know, when we think about Banksy, he's so popular, but hardly anybody knows that he took his inspiration from Black Le Rat, you know, a uh, French artist. And if you check him up, you'll see how similar Banksy's work actually is. Of course, he's now he's got his own ideas now, but that was his beginning. The edges are done. Now a quick brush work, and this definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we are going to pour over. I just want to get rid of the dark background. That's all. Well, as I said, it's not needed. This section, maybe I just miss my brush. You know, I hardly ever use it on this channel. I've decided on the seven colors of the rainbow, so we have a symbol of hope, uh, but I slightly adapted them. So instead of normal red, I'm using amaranth red. This is papaya orange. We've got gold. This is turquoise that I mixed myself. Electric blue, pearl lilac, and rose. Now I'm also going to use titanium white, and I'm going to put one drop of silicone in my white. 
and I say one or two drops of silicone. One, two. If you want smaller cells, more like lacing, then you mix it really well. I'm going to apply the white without silicone just, just at the edges because I don't want his mouth to be dotty. Um, maybe this is going to be white as well. Actually, I'm thinking and thinking and I think I want this edge white as well. Now the most important thing for this part, I am going to cut some paper towel into strips for swiping. This is regular paper towel, nothing special. Okay, now let's lay our colours. Um, so that's the first colour. They will be blending, I don't mind actually if they blend a bit. Now we've got, well, yellow, no, it's actually gold, turquoise. Now this is electric blue. I'm overlapping them just a bit. And I'm going to add a bit of white here. Make some wispy mane on this section. So what do we have? A bit of lilac now. And my last colour, rose. This is the white with silicone. And I am going to pour it here. And that's the paint I'm going to swipe with. I have still some more if I need more. I'm spraying napkins with water. Okay, so we start. Position it ever so gently. That's so pretty. Okay, so I've done this section. Now the main is going to be going down. Now I need some of this white, so let's just dip it in. Just wondering if I go again this way, just want a bit more colour here. I think that looks really nice, doesn't it? It's dipping in this white. Okay, and now I'm going to add really small amount of this silicone white and then swipe these bits what do you think i was about to leave it till it's completely dry but i don't know what's wrong with me i just have to peel it when it's wet so i came back and I am going to start peeling it off. Let me just find which section to start with. I really don't want to destroy it. Oh. I'll start with this bit. It's one hour after I poured, so in some places the paint is a bit tacky now. That was a scary bit. Okay, I'll fix this part. Okay, I'll try to be super, super careful. He's looking so nice.
yay just really really minor bits to improve later but it's going to dry quicker actually when I peel it q-tip to the rescue it's the blue one once you touch the blue with water it gets lighter so that's not a problem you see there was a droplet of water so it becomes really light Okay, so now I can look at the time. 10 past 1 a.m. My unicorn is ready, completely dry. Can you see the gold? Those beautiful cells. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. However, I can't really see this. I'm not sure if you can see the difference between the blue and the black. So what I've decided, I've decided to add a bit more blue to the background. You will see the difference so that's the color when it's wet and that's the color when it's dry so I'm just going to add some sections lighten them up hopefully it doesn't have to be perfect there'll be just some shadows in the sky a bit lighter and if need be I might even add a bit of white to it just to lighten it up you can see how the pouring section was, how shiny that was, but it doesn't matter since I'm going to varnish it anyway. I'm going to add a bit of blue here as well. It's very difficult to cover the background with this blue because it's it's not opaque, it's transparent. You can see the square that tells us that the paint is actually transparent. Well, but, but when I started, I wasn't sure that I wanted black background or blue, so it's all right. I think I'm almost done. I'm a bit tempted to add a bit of gold here because of those lovely golden cells and I'm imagining that there's some light coming from this direction. So how about adding just a little bit of gold? Okay, I'm going to leave it to dry. Then I'm going to varnish the piece. By the way, uh, I know lots of you will be asking, if you use silicone, how do you actually get rid of the residue? So I usually wash it with just a sponge with soapy water. Sometimes I spray it with isopropyl alcohol and then wipe it off as well. This is the spray I'm going to use. It's Liquitex Gloss Varnish, but unfortunately I'm going outside. I'm not going to spray in my studio. So I'll be back with the spray piece. Well, there it is. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of my unicorn. If you have any ideas for a piece you would like to see me make, please let me know in the comments. If it's your first time watching, please consider subscribing. I have new videos coming every Saturday and I chat to my subscribers live when they premiere. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.